evening. I'd like to welcome everyone to the Thursday, January 5th, 2023 Planning Board meeting. Uh, everyone can stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right, introduction to board members. To my left, we have Jerry Graybill, myself, Michael LaRue. To my right, Don Ganarelli. We have CJ Palatic. And uh, via Zoom, we have Matt Henry. We also have Dave Andreessen, our coding and planning technician, and Irish Griffith, the code enforcement officer. And also via Zoom, we have Lee J. Feldman from SMPDC. All right, I'm going to open up the first public comment. Um, this is open to any, any resident that has to say anything that is something that's not on our agenda today. They can speak now. Okay, close that public comment, and I will open up the public hearing for the preliminary major subdivision, the Berwicks, map 36, lot 38. So anyone can come up, just state your name, your address, and then just say your piece, and then you can sit down, and we will answer your questions in old business. Good evening. My name is Craig Keisker. Uh, I thought we were going to get a presentation first. We, uh, we tried to be proactive. We came to the town hall after we got our letter. And uh, we're told that as I asked questions, some of them were answered incorrectly. And uh, so when I pursued that with town code and different directions, that was pretty much a waste of my time. And I went and pursued questions from people uh, with knowledge of uh, legal sides and everything else. And, and then when we got to the walkthrough, it was separate. I was also told at the town hall that it wasn't put on your site until after this meeting by Dave. And then I was made aware today it is on the site, I believe. You and Neil said that the whole project is on the site. And all I got from Dave was the original drawing of what we walk today not of the whole property which also I ask and inquired is there anything else he's trying to build what are the setbacks what are the what is the maximum amount of families allowed on that parcel being R1 R2 and 8.8 .8 acres what are the restrictions of thing and he wasn't able to to give me the answers other than uh, he told me to go read the code which I asked that it's all, all online he said yes and that's where I got it and I believe that's up to date I hope and that's the right one I read for the town and so I tried to do my homework that way uh, but uh, I you know the other drawings you know we, he told me well maybe at some point they could do something up there it depends on setbacks but but they already have it drawn <laughs> so I the people that work for me so far haven't really helped me you know the ones that we pay our tax dollars for so I am a little frustrated right now at this point so I'd really love to hear Neil's presentation so I understand apples for apples on what we're talking about that it's not a cluster that it's condos I was told that it's all being held by a realtor at first and only going to be rented but a condo can be sold and they don't need to come back in front of you if I understand it correctly once it's built they can sell each one as an individual it's not as I was informed, it was all going to be rentals. There's no selling of them at this time. They would have to come back in front of the board, you stated to me, Dave, and to change that at a later date. But from the quick things I was able to read since the walkthrough, it looks like a condo doesn't have that restriction. That was on a cluster, which I was told it was, and it's not. And we're dealing with that now. And I'm just trying. So I can't speak for all these people. But I don't really know what I'm up against. And when we were out there, we weren't really encouraged to ask questions because we were told we were going to get a presentation and then we would be able to ask a question. I would like to know why there's two meetings tonight and we don't get to digest things and then try to, to as a group, you know, like I tried to be proactive. It didn't work. <laughs> it doesn't work in this building for some reason. Uh, but 
uh, and, and get my questions ready and be ready for you guys because I know there's a 30 day window before you guys have to sign it and uh, that I don't know if you can make that longer or shorter that between you guys I, but I believe if I read the, the uh, town rules that it, there's 30 days for you guys to look at this and then you have to sign that's pretty much uh, the time so we tried to you know we're trying to get it and get going but it's hard to I don't know why, and Dave kept saying, two meetings tonight, which was very good. You know, he pointed out that we need we had two times. Don't leave early. Stay for both. Uh, can you tell me why there's two? We don't, as people, there's don't There's only get one meeting tonight. There's only one public hearing tonight. <laughs> okay. Uh, anyway, excuse you me. You understand there's, there's why There's two I, public I'm hearings this evening. evening. <laughs> there's two public hearings this evening. It doesn't evening. say it on the agenda. It doesn't say it on the agenda, Dave. Well, that's what, that's what we talked about. Okay. That's what we. That's what you and I talked about before the meeting. Before the meeting, we we're talking. Okay. About, right. May I? So I think, if I recall, what James said correctly, the the you guys have to find the application complete, or is this finding a fax? No, we one. have to find it complete. But we and all then, we did was accept the sketch plan. Yeah, and, and then, then he said there would be a, another opportunity for, or should be another opportunity for the public to speak, or yeah. maybe keep the public comment open. Yeah. Lee J, would you like to speak in on this? Certainly. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, so tonight is the public hearing where the board listens to to comments, um, like uh, Mr. Um, is it Kiskers? Um, and other folks that may have questions and want to get answers. And uh, I'm assuming that the applicant's representative is there and can provide some of those answers this evening. Then the planning board um, would, the, the reason you're thinking there's two, two items on the agenda is because it's listed twice. One is for the public hearing. And then if the planning board chooses to take action on the preliminary approval, then they could take action on the preliminary approval, but the applicant still has to come back for a final review and a final approval at a later date. So that's why it's listed twice on the agenda so that there's the public hearing portion, they'll close the public hearing, and then they can go into deliberation and potentially take action only on the preliminary portion of the project. Okay. My confusion was uh, uh, someone said two public hearings, and that's why I was looking at you like we only have one. So it is just that public hearing and the old business. And then after the old business, like Lee Jay says, is when it comes back up. If there's any more concerns that need to be voiced out, then you will have your opportunity for it. That's, um, that's exactly what I meant. Yeah. Perfect. Okay. Perfect. All right. Yeah. Yeah. We want to make sure everyone has their voice heard and every everything is um, up to spec and everyone's on board. So, um, with that, if there is anyone else that would like to speak, yeah, just come on up. State your name and your address. Thank you for this opportunity, uh, board. Um, my name is Mary Gagne from uh, 23 Cemetery Road. Um, so we have totally enjoyed where we're living with the nice privacy in back there. That will be changed as of now. So we are directly behind where the um, townhouses are going to be. And so I have two problems, two concerns. One is um, the any privacy screening because when I took a look at that it was certainly so narrow that even putting any shrubs or whatever is going to be growing onto the road and all over the place falling over so whatever I'm just am concerned about having s continued um, some privacy screening there because it's not very far from the houses and number two the drainage so I saw where um, where your uh, that drainage area is Ours has been, and I don't know with this road if it's going to be worse, ours has actually been coming down from where the Mackey Way is be just before that road bifurcates. That's where we get all our water, and that's what goes into our um, uh, garage right now. We took care of the water that was coming into our um our uh, porch by during a, uh, a drywall kind of thing so the water collects there without freezing 
But in the spring, the water comes from that Mackey Way bifurcation. And that still we try to make a little mound there to direct it a little differently. And most of the time it works unless it's a really lot of rain. So either we're going to have to dig another dry well just before the, um, before the garage again to try to encourage that to go there rather than into the, the, the garage. So those were my uh, two concerns. So that wetland that you have taken care of over there, that sounds great. That's actually going to be more for my neighbor's yard because that's the direction it, it, w it would hit. But mine has actually been from that Mackey's Way. So those two concerns, uh, continuing with privacy and the uh, drainage. So thank you for the opportunity. Okay, thank you. Greg Keisker again, 160 Pine Hill Road. So are you going to do a presentation or do I start trying to ask questions with quite a bit of ignorance? Because I looked at clusters, not condos, on what it is. And I mean, do I go first or does Mr. Uh, Neil, I'm not sure you might say sorry for civil consult. <laughs> Everybody keeps calling him Neil. So <laughs> I just... Um, I mean, Lee J, do we usually give a presentation before or is it af like after the public hearing? There's really nothing that dictates that. I mean, I think if Neil can do a presentation now so that applicants, uh, so that the abutters or other folks that haven't um, been privy to a lot of the information yet want to hear about it before they ask questions, that's certainly acceptable. So if you want to sure. allow Neil to do that okay. presentation, that would be fine. Yes. Okay. Neil, if you don't hey, mind. Thank you. Bye. Yep. Matt. I can't I can't see you guys. I didn't want to interrupt. I can't see you. Okay. Lee J, can you see them? No, I just see the BCM. BCM. Yeah, same. I don't same. I don't see them. Yeah, I don't I don't see the town. I don't see you guys. Just throwing it out there. I can still talk. Yep. Okay, hey, I'll, I'll start an introductory presentation here for, uh, for this project. Uh, my name is Neil Raposa, I'm a civil consultant here on behalf of uh, Pine Hill Realty, LLC. Uh, what we have proposed here is, uh, it's a major subdivision and conditional use application. Uh, it is a combined, combined application for the two, uh, and that's for the, for the multifamily use up front is what requires that conditional use. Um, it's an 8.4 acre lot uh, that spans uh, between Pine Hill Road and Cemetery Cemetery Road. Uh, as was uh, kind of discussed previously, we have we have two proposed single family lots here. Um, and this is, um, let me backtrack a little bit. Uh, this lot is partially in the R1 zone and partially in the R2 zone. Um, only this small section right up against Pine Hill Road is uh, in that R1 zone, which allows for a little bit, a uh, little bit denser, a uh, little bit denser uh, development and smaller lot sizes. Majority of it out here, and this is what we're taking all our, you know, our calculations for the multifamily as well as these two separate lots out here. That's what the, all that calculation is based on. Uh, in order to keep these lots at uh, at 20,000 square feet. Uh, they need to have a municipal water and sewer uh, connected. Uh, and that is the reason why we have this long 30-foot uh, wide easement to, uh, to, allow, uh, to allow both utilities to come through and serve these lots. And then these lots, uh, that's what allows those to be 20,000. Uh, if, if anything were to happen and this, uh, these two lots were not connected to municipal uh, sewer water uh, prior to occupancy, then this would be required to be uh, a 60,000 square foot lot. And I think that was uh, where people had been getting the idea that these were undersized. Because uh, if they didn't have this, this large easement coming across and providing them those utilities, then these would have to be larger. Um, so we'll flip to the, to the next one here. So this this is more um, this is more close up on the multifamily condo uh, portion of it. This is where the, the majority of the design was, and uh, 
You want me to pull this out so you can see? Yeah, you got, you got okay. No, you're fine. Uh, and so here we have our, our design plan. Uh, it consists of a private right-of-way uh, being uh, sectioned off of the parcel, but still it's going to be owned in conjunction with uh, this giant, uh, the, the larger parcel that's, that's accommodating the condo units, uh, and it'll be maintained and kept by the condo association, uh, so that's it's not proposed to ever be taken over by the town or, or maintained by the town in any way. Um, it's uh, coming in off of Pine Hill Road uh, as a 24-foot wide uh, roadway to town standards uh, to get the uh, frontage to allow the, allow the rest of the development. So we've uh, brought this around and brought a one-way uh, driveway coming across and then connecting back into the, uh, the new access roadway. Uh, we've expanded uh, this portion of the roadway slightly to, to 24 feet. Uh, the remainder of this is just going to be a 20-foot uh, one-way one -way, uh, access. Uh, and this was just due to the request of, of the fire department upon their review. They wanted to be able to uh, have, a, have a, an emergency vehicle be able to be parked here and still have a second emergency vehicle uh, bypass that. Um, as I said, there are 10, uh, 10 condo units uh, proposed. They're townhouse-style condos uh, with uh, each one will have a one-car under garage and uh, enough room for a legal parking space uh, in front of the units. And then we're also proposing uh, a 13 uh, spaces for visitor maintenance, uh, you know, additional, additional uh, cars that any of the residents may, uh, may be utilizing. Um, we have... We have designed and implemented a, a grass filter area out here adjacent to the wetland. Um, and this is going to be catching uh, the flow off of the parking lot, which is the main concern for a lot of stormwater treatment. Uh, so that's going to be treating that as well as treating the flows uh, to make sure that we do not have any flows excess coming off the lot. Uh, as, uh, is it Mary? Um, yes. Yeah. Yes. Did, uh, as you uh, noted there, there was a lot of the water that flows kind of over that hill and down into where this, uh, your adjoining property is here. And we, we were aware that, that that could be an issue. Uh, so that's um, why we, we have super elevated that roadway to tip back into the development. And that we uh, have uh, a couple of catch basins on the other side of the roadway there so that everything will come back and get into these and it actually will pipe down and go to a, a level spreader, which is intended to slow that flow down, and that will enter directly into that wetland. So that theoretically should bypass your property entirely. Um, we have submitted for a uh, permit by rule and permit by notification for uh, the disturbance itself with the Department of en Environmental Protection, and that was, it was granted or it wasn't rejected, so that equals it was granted. Uh, and also for uh, impact to the wetlands here, we got a uh, NRPA permit by rule for the utilities that will cross uh, eventually. And so that's enough of a, an overview for for now. Or is there anything else on me to hit on? Are we allowed to answer? It's if you do, you got to come up and speak. But right. uh, I mean, I can. If it's if uh, anything that's on here meets all the requirements, all the all the minimum requirements for the town, and that's something this will be going through review, and that all those you know kind of check boxes will have to be have to be checked off to make sure all the dimensional things work, that the widths, the setbacks, and all of that. So, as it stands now, yes, everything on the on the plan meets the meets the dimensional requirements. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, Neil. <coughs> Craig Keisker, once again, from 160 Pine Hill Road. Um, we've been trying to find out, I believe there's 250 feet of frontage, deal on the road? There is. I don't know off the top of my head how much frontage total there is on there. There's a lot of stuff. Still, I can't read it on this one, but there's a total of... Uh, some of uh, uh, 100 feet of frontage for uh, it's over 100 feet of frontage for the existing uh, the existing lot, and then the frontage that we are obtaining is actually going to be on that private right of way. It's going to be built to town standards, and that's where we says to get that uh, to get the frontage you need. For it says minimum 150. <coughs> on here. 
What I'm trying to find out is how much how much are you using of that for that right away? Okay. Of that um, road front. You can <laughs> answer. You, we'll ask the question now, but you can answer that in old business. Neil, thank you. All right. We're just getting too far in the weeds. This isn't. It, it's question time, not question and answer time right now. Okay. <laughs> now, we're just curious. And then how much of is the original house sitting on that you're taking out of that 8.4 acres? Also, when I looked under a cluster, now this does not pertain, I guess, to condos, but it said that they must have two drawings, one that actually put single-family homes in on that property at, at all restrictions with everything right, a road, everything. Then based on the amount of houses that could be there, they couldn't build a bigger cluster than the amount of dwellings that would have been there, okay? Well, I don't know now that they are putting in this power easement over an existing lot, which can be sold later, the whole thing. I don't know that, all those codes. I'd love to have this gentleman chime in or whatever and explain that to us. But R2, like Neil said, was 60,000 square feet otherwise, and there was no way you were getting 12 families living on this property, sending kids to school and all. And, and the other question is, how many bedrooms are in these? Because no one has said that yet. Now, I know it's got one garage, but <laughs> nobody will tell me how many it sleeps. How many are in these condos? How many bedrooms, you know? You wait till all business. This is just the asking question time. <laughs> well, answers lead to more questions. Yep. So we got to have answers at some point. Do we get questions after we get answers? You get questions the, the next time it comes in. Those the next meeting yep. later? Yep. So all we're allowed to do is answer questions now. We you don't ask know. questions right now that you have questions for. And when we have those answers and you have new questions, you can come in and ask them again. Right now, how many meetings do we have in 30 days? Well, can I have that answer? I, I don't, sir. I don't know where you're getting 30 days from. That was when <laughs> that was because we were told cluster, and when I read the rules. No, this said, isn't. This isn't a cluster. I know, but that's what we were told originally. I, I didn't. I, I did not tell you that it was a cluster. This isn't 30 days. <laughs> This, you this, didn't this tell project, me 30 days. We I didn't that. tell you 30 days. We didn't, but we didn't, can argue We can that. argue about that if you'd like. But I didn't argue. I just told you you were right, sir. No, that's not what you said earlier. You said I, I told you The cluster days. thing, I'm right on. The, the time frame we read under a cluster in the town uh, bylaws, I, or whatever you want to call them. But uh, no, the rest of it, yes, you did tell me that. <laughs> Absolutely. That's it. I, I, I would did? have never gone looking for a cluster. I did tell you that? Yes, 100%, at least three times. Both both of my visits, you t cited that, and I asked you more about it, and you said as long as they have setbacks, they can cluster well, as many as possible. Not. Okay, all right. Yep, yeah, it's not. So we're just going to keep moving on. Um, just please pertain to this. Okay. The other thing is where they're talking about running that 30-foot power easement, there is a culvert that uh, feeds from Fox Ridge all the way down. It's, it was hand dug, I don't know how many years ago. And it still does work, and it needs to be dealt with because, uh, as Neil pointed out, when Civil did their walkthrough, they didn't what, see a lot of flow or something like that. Yeah, I no, forget your word. Yeah. But you know the whole what I'm talking about on the wall down there. Yeah. Yeah. And you see how deep it is. That's where you know, you'll have deer down in there in the middle of winter. Cause it's the only place to they, water. Yeah, they can't hear. What the reason why he can't answer anything is you have to be up on the mic. The people at home that are watching can't hear. Okay. And so that needs to be dealt with also. Um, the amount of homes and the amount of bedrooms and you know things like that. I I do. I, I need to understand where bringing in an easement for power has uh, enables you to bring to basically turn it to R1 somehow. You basically just taken an R2 and made it zoning to an R1 at that point. I, I'd love to know why, how that's done that simply. I also would like to know who in the highway department or whatever is picking the exit for that. I mean, if they can put an easement all the way out, they could come out on cemetery too, right? So why are we putting 
two trailer park entrances, Old Pine Hill Cemetery Road, a new development you guys have already okayed just just within between almost cemetery and uh, Old Pine Hill. Uh, there's the acreage right across the street from me, which I believe the same gentleman owns, and I'm sure that he'll be doing something with that, and there'll be another road there. Then we have Fox Ridge. You know how many roads we have entering on that bend? You realize that the fire department hits that siren before they start that bend and before they start all those intersections because of the amount of volume and the traffic and the issues there, and is this being addressed? Also is what we read, back to reading the wrong thing, but I think it should apply, I hope it applies to everything. It said that they need to provide cost for the police, the fire, the schools. They need to say what the, what the effect of the these 12 dwellings. And I'd also like to know, are they done at 12? Because they've left 50 feet to come in to that land that's in the middle <laughs> between the condos and between the house units. And also, have they left themselves enough to do another condo section when they tear down the old house? Because other than vinyl side and it moving somebody in, the electrical service isn't even tied to the side of the house. It's dangling there. I mean, nothing's been brought, it, the barn's fallen in. And so nothing's telling me that somebody's taking care of that property and leaving it the way it is. It tells me that they've done everything else. They're real. Why are they subdividing it now? And what are their, <laughs> what are they up to? Basically, <laughs> you're just trying to find out instead of just letting people chip away at it and us being back here every time and you guys hearing it every time because they're just chipping away. And, and just like they did down the road where we have Pine Hill and Old Pine Hill and you got that big pile of dirt and everybody, all the neighbors and all the abutters are wondering when and we're going to find out what's going on there, you know, because we know you're, they're not done. And do you like looking at just high grass and a mess and a pile of dirt? <coughs> Is there no, you know, can they do that here too? Just, just leave that area just untended and, you know, just left? Is that considered green space between all this? I don't know. I'm trying to find those questions out. And uh, you know what the rules are on it. You guys know. We don't. And uh, off the top of my head, do you have any more? Yes. Hi, my name is Lynn Keister, 160 Pine Hill Road. Um, we abut um, 156 all the way down. Um, from the very front all the way back down to the cemetery. Um, my husband's already hit on probably most of the things that I had here. Um, I guess other just little things to touch on. I mean, it's rock wall almost the whole way down. There's a small section that it does not have um, rock wall. It's down by the back lots. Um, I'm going to make sure you're not going to touch the rock wall. It doesn't get touched. I mean, there's a 30 foot. We're proposing a 30-foot utility easement all the way down on our side, almost all the way. Um, we're concerned about that. That's one concern. Um, we want to make sure, I mean, how the setbacks R1, R2, I mean, how we want to make sure, like my husband said, that all this is permissible on this size of the lot. I don't understand how you're going to get, how, you, how could that can be allowed on that size, um, if they can kind of go over, I would like to have information on that. Again, the effects on the schools and municipalities. Um, there's a, sorry, I'm just trying to look at my notes here. I'd like to get copies of the applications and any anything that they submitted. I mean, what can we get? Um, is there any kind of timeline? I mean, we were told out there today that there's nothing really we can do about it. Um, you know, they, that as long as everything that they've applied for is by code, that there's nothing we can do. Um, and that's, that's very sad, you know. We've had this property for a long time. Okay, I'd like to get a copy of the, you know, the condo bylaws. They can allow pets. Um, Again, the driveway, like my husband said, there's a, the traffic is terrible. We've had a rock well hit numerous times. Our 
our um, mailbox wiped out. Um, people have had accidents there. There's so many ins and outs there between, like you said, Old Pine Hill Cemetery, the, the two entrances to the um, mobile home park. Um, there's going to be that one. Is, I mean, it's terrible right there. Um, people don't go 35, that's for sure. Um, you know, the size of the bedrooms. There's back patios, it looks like, that are on the back side that face on that one unit that's against our, um, our property. It looks like they have, like, patios, and you're going to put um, bushes there. Um, just concerned about... You know, I guess the visibility and, and pets and what they're going to allow. Um, then lot three, the hill. Um, there's nothing I think that he said that they're doing right now with it, but there must be some kind of intent. Why are they leaving it right now? Um, is, is there some? You know, is, is there supposed to be an open space for 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 that one for the lot? I'm sorry, bouncing around here, but where you're putting in the, the units in lot two, again, in the concern for um, the space for it. Isn't there supposed to be a, a certain amount of open or common space? I mean, that's all been taken into account, I'm sure. I know you guys are very good about it. <laughs> but um, it's, I just want to have a little bit more information. And like I said, my husband came down trying to get it. We didn't get the proper information and just trying to, you know, we've been there for like about 20 years, just trying to make sure that, you know, where we live, we love it there. And, and um, I can't think of anything else to say, so um, we have, you know, walks that go out around the back, it's a very nice property. Um, Are, is the, the lots in the back now that we just heard about when we were there today for the preview and walkthrough? Those lots in the back, um, it looks like there'll be the code I mean, with the easement coming back, but and the, but there's nothing there for there's nothing that we can do on that either. I mean, they're just going to be lots. They don't have to put any fence. They don't have to do anything there, right? I mean, it's just a uh, a building lot that's according to the town ordinances just to go by their rules, right? So, I mean, it's just we're going to have more questions, mm -hmm. but it just seems like a very odd way of doing things that you don't, you know, you just kind of have to keep coming back and forth and back and forth, you know. Um, I guess that's what I can think of right now, but I would like to get copies of everything, you know, the applications and plans and everything that we can get so that we can review it and come back and ask more questions. Okay, thank you. James, uh, sorry. <laughs> Mike? Yep. Dave? Copy the application which we got, which is what the planning board has, on the town's website underneath today. If you click on it, it's underneath there all the information that the planning board, that the town, the town employee has, code enforcement, town planning has, it's all on the website. Everything, we don't have any secret documents. It's all published on the town website. Under the government section, that's where you'll find Under Yep, government planning board. You won't find it if you go to the planning department. You'll have to go to the government section under that. Okay. Gentlemen, my name is John Uzzle. I own 159 Pine Hill Road. Can you state your last name again, please? I got to type the record. Sure. U Z Z L E. Thank you. You're very welcome. Show of hands. Who travels on Pine Hill Road? heading to or from, say, Lebanon? Many people do. Has anyone ever thought about doing any kind, is there, is there any kind of um, survey team that's going to be looking at the roads and the traffic pattern, especially on that particular corner? 
In my tenure of living where I do, for the past 10 years, I've, I have witnessed two really awesome accidents right there on that corner. And the reason why, speed is a huge factor on that corner. Speed limit's 35. Nobody does 35 on that corner. I've actually had the police sit in front of my front yard, right into my driveway, and clock people flying up and down that road. And for a little while, they sat there and they, they had a nice little speed trap there, probably six, seven years ago. It was great. The problem is, on this particular corner, you have the entrance to, if I can use your map, you have the entrance to the mobile home park. And now you're going to put an entrance to condos in an excellent blind spot. So if you travel up that road, right on that spot, you will not see traffic coming in or out of either of these, these entrances until if you're traveling it's 35 you may you'll you'll be fine if you travel 40 45 which is kind of the norm you're not gonna it's the braking issue i mean it's my house shakes when people do over 50. people do 60 on that corner i feel it and it happens a lot so this particular corner is kind of dangerous somebody should be looking into that some sort of traffic pattern or or some sort of I don't know the second issue that I have is yes you guys are putting in a utility some sort of utility um, to get water and sewer and electric and, and so forth down to the other lots at some point, is that going to be paved? Just a big question. Because looking at the other map on this, it really looks like that's going to be a road at some point down the line. And I know, hey, my house is right in front of that. And, you know, I know that my neighbor Chris um, is going to be having the issues with headlights in his living room and probably in his bedroom and so forth and I'm going to have that issue if those if that easement turns into a, a paved road also um, so is that fair nah you know I'm just a homeowner I'm just a guy who owns a house right right there is it fair to the other people? Yeah. So, I would just like to have more information about what's going on and, and not be blindsided by, ooh, they're, they're, they're doing this great. So, traffic pattern is a big thing. It's a, it is an unsafe corner. Mm -hmm. So, thanks. Okay, thank you. Hey, I'm uh, Chris White. I live at 151 Pine Hill Road. Um, I live directly across from where the driveway is proposed. Um, I'm going to get headlights probably all hours of the night, shine in my living room and bedroom, like John said. Um, bought my property 11 years ago. I was only 23 years old. You know, I got it pretty good deal on it. I love that I can look across the road, see a big field, deer come out, and it's relatively quiet in the morning other than the traffic, and there's a lot of traffic, people going to work. Um, the traffic is a big problem for me. Trying to get out of my driveway is extremely hard. I get almost rear-ended probably three, four times a week because people are going so fast around that corner, and I have to, like, hustle to get out of my driveway and get going. And I hate that. People do not do anywhere near the speed limit. And now with this proposed driveway across the way, add in the, the trailer park, add in the fact that people don't go the speed limit, it's gonna be very dangerous. I've witnessed 
the same accidents that John has, and they've been pretty bad because people just don't slow down. I've had somebody end up in my front yard because they didn't know how to slow down, you know? My mailbox is across, it's directly across the street. It's actually going to, it's where the proposed driveway is, and I've seen that thing get hit probably close to a dozen times. And I just leave it there because it's kind of entertaining to see how many times you get hit in the winter or whatever, but and I know I'm jumping all over the place here, but I like my house. I like where I can look across there and see nothing. Now I'm going to be looking at all these condos. And I'm sure it's going to create a lot of noise. It's going to create a lot of traffic. Um, I think where the proposed driveway is is a terrible idea. And why can't it? go out onto Cemetery Road. That's my question. That's all I have right now. Thanks. Okay, thank you. I have my phone because I wrote everything down. Um, my name is Stephanie Jones. I live at 161 Pine Hill Road. <laughs> um, I just have to say I moved down here back to where I grew up about since 2017 from North Conway. And I specifically picked my house because of where it was and because of how quiet it was and it was better for my kids. Um, so just want to put that out there. Since living there, um, I also have to hustle my butt out of my driveway because there's no cars coming and all of a sudden they're whipping around the corner. It is crazy and they fly through there. So my main concern is the traffic. I have young children. I actually have eight children. I have two who still live with me, but I have six grandchildren. It is crazy, and I'm so afraid for my kids to go into my front yard because of how fast this traffic goes through, just just flying down the road. And you're right, the sirens hit like right before you get to our houses, and I never thought about that because they're coming around the corner. It is all the time. It, it, it's all the time, and it just, it, it's, it's frightening. And, and when you have small kids, the traffic is a huge deal. So with that being said, um, I know that John touched on all the entrances from... Um, Old Pine Hill Road to Fox Ridge, and now you're adding one or two more. The traffic is just going to get worse. And I didn't even, I, when we first got the letter in the mail, I wasn't really thinking about the traffic. I was thinking about extra houses and what was going in there. Is this subsidized housing? Is my, I, can, I suppose that can't be answered. Um, if it is or isn't, is my, is my you know, the market value on my home going to go down? Is it time for me to sell my house after I drove down here probably for two months looking for a house and finally picked that one? I mean, I hope not um, because it, when traffic gets bad, as I'm talking to my husband who can't be here tonight because he works away, he's like, he's telling me, as I'm sitting there, it's time to move. We need to sell the house before that goes in because our market value is going to go down. That's just sad. I, I bought my home in Berwick. These houses aren't even built yet, and I'm being, I'm going to have to move. It, regardless, these are being built. The traffic is going to get worse. I'm going to have more grandchildren because I have eight children. I mean, they're just going to keep on coming. I mean, it's just it's it's not. And you have a, you have a small child too. It's it's just not it's not safe. It's not a safe area anymore. With that being said, how are you going to accommodate all these extra families who have children going on buses? I had to transport my children during COVID because the buses, well, being safe or not, whatever with COVID. But it continues on. I still have to pick up my kids sometimes to and bring them to. I bring my daughter every day to school. It's just you, you. What are you supposed to do? How are more kids getting on these buses? There's already a bus shortage, especially for our area. I mean, they've canceled school for a couple at Lebanon, Berwick once because there was no bus drivers to get these kids there. So now we're adding m more. And I'm all for building and families coming in. That's great, but not right there. And not that traffic flow. It's the traffic flow. Um, I guess when does this project start? When does building start? So we have to worry about all these construction vehicles and people going in and out. So we have a, at least a time frame to plan something in our own households. And um, when does this project plan on finishing? As a homeowner, I'd like to know to give myself time if I want to sell my house or not before it gets bad. Thank you. Thank you.
Craig Keisker, 160 Pine Hill Road again. I just want to make a uh, civil consultant, you guys aware of the fact that that property does have quite a bit of bamboo on it. And it's right where they split the original lot and that little house. You may not be able to see it in the winter. You gotta look good, but it's chuck full of it. And there is none on my property, and I don't believe there's any on yours or anybody else that abuts it. And if they're gonna start construction and start spinning dirt around there, they better pay attention to what they're doing because bamboo is not easy to get rid of and I'm not paying to get rid of it somebody else is and I've been here with you guys and made you aware of it so please consider that we all know you can get filled real cheap if you don't mind it having bamboo in it but everybody else pays for real right? for real dirt and there's a big difference but that bamboo is quite a bit I made the original person when they bought the property and they went in there to redo that house I walked over and I made sure and I pointed it out to all of them and the gentleman, the older gentleman that's been there, has kept the grass cut around it, which is probably his only way to keep it, try to keep it down. But when you start pushing dirt around and excavating, that's when it becomes a big issue. And that ought to, that needs to be con a big concern, that bamboo. Okay, thank you. <laughs> they keep coming in my head. I can't get answers. <laughs> uh, the other thing, Craig Geisker, 160 Pine Hill Road. Uh, the other thing is, you know, I don't want to do it to anybody, any of these people, but they're also got the driveway. Miss Falls driveway has big stone wall. You barely can see out of that. I pulled out of that many times when I was helping her out over the years. Had the pleasure of being with her. What a wonderful woman. Never left her without being a better person. Great lady. Uh, a true Berwickian. Not me, her. <laughs> okay? And uh, um, no, finest kind. But that also, I mean, don't forget, there's a lot right there that only has a post office box, you know? Uh, that's right there that would have no headlights coming out okay you could be directly across an intersection if you guys you know on the one below us too but nobody's doing any planning that way we're just popping them in wherever they come out and acting like it's a driveway it's not a driveway and if these guys are going to keep adding more to it it's more than just 10 houses with god knows how many bedrooms we're still waiting for that answer with a drum roll but uh you know you don't know how many cars are coming out of there they they already have two parking spots and everybody's got an extra one for a friend or it's it's a nice forethought though for maintenance and all i think so you know i i understand that part of it i think it's you know it's all good thinking uh but that's that's all volume coming out of there you know, that house is going to become more of these because you guys didn't say no this is it if you're going to do it this is where what we got you know when are we going to get the full story on anything okay the fact they can wait and revisit it and come back and build again isn't there rules like this is the amount uh, you can build on that and that's it it's over you know what i mean that that's what you bought and that's what you got and uh but when they can keep coming and chipping away at a piece of property as things turn or the code gets... I mean, when I came here in 2000, people spent New Year's Eve out here with a beer in their hand waiting in line and hoping somebody would have to pee so they could move up because you only gave away 20 building permits, you know? And now we give them away like their toilet paper. You know, here, take another roll. So it's just getting ridiculous. And yes, it feeds into our schools, our buses. All these things are all real. That's why I thought when it was interesting when I read the town bylaws for cluster that they said we want a, a written effect of what it is on the fire, the police, the town, the road maintenance, everybody. And if this doesn't apply under a condo because I haven't got it should. All right, and we need to change that. So please tell me the difference, and I will go home and read the government site. Thank you very much, Ira, and and try to read it and get it out of it. But if this is something, if this is something we can't deal with here, we you know maybe I need to come more, and more people need to come more, and we need to revisit this because uh, we are starting to really fill them up, and we already pay an incredible mill rate right now and we all know with inflation the prices of houses may come down and what's that going to do it's just going to up the mill rate right we're still going to have the same amount of bills right we all know that game and so you know sooner or later we need to be responsible as a town to say what we really can fund and what we really can take 
and who ha, who we can help, how many we can help. So we can because we all create low income. We all create people that need a hand and help. Every city, every town has those people in it, and they're all an important part of it in every way. But we all need to know what we need to plan for for our budget to take care of all the needs that the town needs, including the needy and the elderly and the different people that might not be able to pay their taxes as they get older and shouldn't have to leave their house. But this all feeds into the same thing is our concern about, you know, how many bedrooms can they build more? What is the limit? And why, you know, if you just dig a little underground power, you can turn it into R1? God, you light that on fire and see how many people start running with that. We'll fill those schools real quick, you know. So please give it some consideration. I'm not saying I want to spend New Year's Eve out here, but we did used to have a lot of fun. <laughs> okay, thank you. Gentlemen. John Hussle, 159 Pine Hill Road. Quick question on this existing house that's going to be on this parcel here. Is there an ability or a way that we can get this so that this is an historic house? It's a farmhouse. I know because I live across the street from it, and the people who initially built this built my house. Is there any historic society that can make this home or this parcel here to remain a house after this particular gentleman who's, who's in it right now when he passes away so that this stays an historic house so that no other buildings can be put there or this can be torn down? Is there anything along those lines that can be done or researched? Okay. Thank you. Yep. Okay. Um, seems like we have a lot of questions. Um, You're going to leave the public hearing open, but you're going to move on, correct? Yeah, yeah. Um, with all these questions, we'll leave the public hearing open. Um, we'll get whatever we can get answered tonight, um, and then the stuff that doesn't get answered, we will answer it in the next meeting. Um, so with that being said, we'll be moving on to the approval of minutes for December 1st, 2022. Yeah, speak up a little louder, Doug. I make a motion to uh, approve the minutes from December 1st. Okay. I'll second. Okay, further discussion. We're going to do a roll call vote because Matt's at Zoom. Um, we'll start with you, Matt. Yeah. Great, say that again. Hit the space button. I, I, was, I was muted. Aye. All right. Aye. Jerry? Aye. I am a yes. Don? Yes. And CJ is abstaining because yes. he wasn't here last meeting. Okay. All right, so old business, preliminary subdivision, lot 36, map 36, lot 38, the Berwicks, Pine Hill Road, and Cemetery Road Civil Consultants. Um, Lee J, would you mind chiming in on this first for us? Uh, I can a little bit. I think that um, certainly most of the information or questions are things that Neil is going to need to respond to, but <clears throat> one of the things that the board um, should consider, considering the concerns that have been raised, would be um, requiring the applicant to do a traffic impact analysis for that area, which would include site distance visibilities um, so that we have a better understanding of the traffic issues out there. Um, I think that my memo that was done before um, the original sketch was discussed, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, included the discussion about, I just want to go back to, to the plan, um, discussion about buffering 
uh, along uh, Mackey Way and, and protecting the Ganyi property and up on that side. So um, Neil may want to take a look at additional buffering along that area um, as requested. Relevant to the zoning, the zoning that's there is there. Um, nothing has been done that would that would allow the zoning to change based on this development. Um, so the front part is R1 and the, there's a split in there where it goes to R2 um, <clears throat> on the plan, excuse me, but the um, certainly better understand it in the R1 zone, um, the minimum lot size, the minimum lot size or density allowance is one unit for every 10,000 square feet. And in the R2, it's one unit for every 20,000 square feet. This project is not um, a cluster um, development, a cluster subdivision, which is what your ordinances talk about, is for a traditional um, residential subdivision where single family homes are put on lots, where they need to provide a traditional design layout based on the zoning and then a cluster plan, which would allow for smaller lots to cluster them in certain locations on the property without adding additional units than what the zoning would allow. On this project, what the zoning allows is all the units that they could get. Um, I have not done a calculation myself to determine how many units they could get. And I think maybe that's a question for Neil to be able to answer um, so that um, there's a better understanding of that. On the easement issue, um, <clears throat> it's easy for me to say an easement is just that, it's an easement. Basically what the easement is, is the allowance for the sewer and water lines to run underground there uh, along someone on, on someone else's property. So um, I can't answer the issue about a, a road at some point, um, that's another thing that I think Neil's going to need to answer, or the board could certainly um, consider a condition of approval when it's time for that, that that, that utility easement never be paved, um, <clears throat> which is, is fair to do. But an easement is simply allowing, for example, the, the um, Berwick um, Water and Sewer Districts to run their sewer lines underground along that property in order to access, for example, the two lots that are out back on Cemetery Road. I'm um, trying to think. The historic district issue um, certainly is an interesting discussion. Um, love to see um, documentation that shows that it's actually a histo historic property to the community. Um, I can tell you that in, in any town in the state of Maine, including with Maine Historic Preservation, unless it's a very high priority historic district, um, all the State Historic District Preservation Commission would do is require the applicant to take photos and then allow them to tear the building down. So um, it would take a great deal um, for somehow pre preserving that um, as a property owner and requiring them to keep it unless the historic district wants it for some reason um, or some other um, entity wants to maintain it. Um, and, but that's certainly a question for Neil to have discussion on as well since he represents the, the landowner there. Um, anything I missed that I think I can help with? Um, I'm not sure. I think a lot of this has got to be turned over to Neil at this point for for him to provide some responses. Okay, thank you, DJ. Okay. Thank you, guys. So, um, again, Neil Raposa, civil consultants. Um, I don't know if you just want me to, to go down through. Yeah, if you want to just go down the okay. list as you saw it. Okay, so um, one of the items was um, how much of the land is being used or could be developed in the future. Uh, that's That's a big item on this one that's the density that we have here for this development as shown, this uh, renders the entire the entirety of this lot uh, not to be developed anymore. This is this is the most you could get out of it. Um, if we did, you know, the conventional subdivision, you probably could run through the whole. We can run through the whole lot, the the entire lot, and get the same amount of lots, you know, around a roadway out there. But there's a lot more infrastructure and there's a lot more impact on. A development like that, uh, so this was uh, really trying to keep it up into the into the portion of the of the lot that was, um, you know, field and, and lawn, and 
you know, previously developed. Um, so there's no there's no way that any of this, as shown, could be uh, could be modified to get more lots or more units in here. This is this is it, uh, unless there was a massive change in you know the code with the town, which I don't see anybody making a, a you know a change in that. Uh, as far as the existing house, existing house is to remain, and uh, that lot that was created there uh, was done so done so specifically with that in mind to keep that building as is as it exists right now. Uh, it's the, the lot itself is oversized for what it, it needs to be in that zone, uh, and that's so we can keep all those setbacks and everything uh, in a location where that building can remain and be uh, and still be code compliant. So that's. Uh, there's no, there's no uh, chance in the future that this is going to be expanded. If if we expanded this, or if we even put more pavement out for the for, over the utility easement, it would uh, trigger a lot of things that we'd have to do for DEP permitting and things like that that just wouldn't make sense to do on this site because the developable area is so you know is so tight with this with the density that we've shown here. Uh, so that's that's I think that's the biggest the biggest item is. This is kind of the end of development on this site as far as just what's allowed to be out there. Um, the, the utility easement, I think, uh, I think Lee Jay explained that, how uh, it's, not, it's not really changing, it doesn't change the, the zoning for you know, each individual lot. It's just that if you provide municipal town, and su town uh, municipal sewer and water, you don't need to account for a well and the, a leach field on your lot, so they allow that, that lot to be smaller because you don't have to set all that land aside. And so that was why we needed that easement to go all the way up to those Cemetery Hill lots so we could shrink those down and get two usable lots out there. We have to provide that municipal services. In the, uh, the easement itself, um, interacting with any of any existing piping or anything out there, uh, that will, if there's anything out there that we'd have to go over or under, uh, both of those lines are going to be pressure lines. That's going to have to be uh, individual pumps on any sewer system, any you know sewer uh, collection system that's out there. So that would be pumped, and we could avoid whatever kind of drainage uh, facilities are out there with that. Again, no teardown of the house is proposed. Um, I'm not sure what Richard's plans are with the house, but it's uh, as of right now, there's been no talk of, of tearing it down. It's only been what we need to do to save it, so. Yeah, but it, the question of green space came up. It's really just the remaining land that's gonna be, uh, the remaining land of the condo association, uh, and that's all gonna be, you know, it's not gonna be developable. Uh, we didn't have uh, any specific uh, um, easements or anything put on that back land just other than the fact that it's uh, it's part of that density requirement so it's it's you know it's forbidden to be developed after this how many bedrooms are going to be in each one do you uh, know? currently uh, he's showing two we don't have a, he did, hasn't given me a final floor plan okay yeah so for the site we just uh, we did the uh, the parking for uh, for the two bedrooms uh, that the parking as it's shown, uh, I'm not sure. I haven't actually even done the calcs going beyond two bedrooms. Uh, but as far as I know, we don't have you know, we don't have floor plans yet, and I, I wouldn't want to venture a guess. So I'd, I'd bring that. Uh, okay. So as of right meeting. now, it's two. Correct. Yeah. Okay. Uh, as far as the traffic, I know um, there there is a lot of traffic on Pine Hill, and I know this this. I've done quite a few you know, traffic studies and things like that. A development like this ends up, when you do the, the full traffic study, uh, the, the residential you know, uh, generators really are not, never usually the issue on those roads. It's always, it's always the traffic that's, that's existing on the road that, that is the issue. Um, so I do have a, an initial traffic uh, assessment in, in the application uh, where we kind of describe uh, what our, our site and our generation is doing. Uh, if the town were to engage in someone to analyze Pine Hill Road as a whole, uh, you know, we could work that into our, 
you know, into what we found, we could provide you with that information. Uh, but I, that's, I think that probably we have to talk to Jody and, and see if Public Works you know, has more information that they could provide on that one. As far as the patios and bushes and pets uh, for the condo units, that is something that they will have to have, you know, a policy on in the condo uh, condo documents, which have not been finalized because we wanted to make sure, uh, you know, the layout and, and what we had coming in, you know, met all the codes and went through review before they put all that together. So that will be another thing that will be uh, submitted for review for final. A lot of, we heard a lot about um, speed being an issue on Pine Hill Road. Again, that's that's more of an enforcement issue, and it's not not on not really for us to be addressing with our application. But again, I think it's something that within the town and, and public works could be discussed. Neil, yep. Um, Neil, how how about? Site distance. Can you do a site distance analysis and put it on the plan? Yep, we, we do have a site distance on here on our sheet. I guess I didn't see that. Oh, I think it's on it's on sheet R one. I'm sorry, it's on the it's on the roadway profile sheet. It's, it does have it does have adequate sight distance. Um, and again, this this is from you know field measurement, just with the with the DOT uh, you know prescribed method. Uh, actually, taking taking a walk up and down the road and getting down at the at the line of sight with vehicles and the and the exiting vehicle and just marking where you still have that vision um, and for. For this one, the uh, there was less vision uh, going up the hill. Uh, there was still 590 feet of vision at that point. And then going down the hill, this is uh, when you're looking down that way. That's where it really straightens out. So there's quite a bit of, of, of vision down that uh, down that way, uh, especially uh, just from where that's where our entrance is located. It's kind of beyond uh, beyond where that where that turn ends. So that was about 900 feet. Of distance there, and that's you know it's all relative to, to what speed you know vehicles are coming in and out at. So it's it meets everything we have on here meets the requirements for for the roadways and the and the driveways. Uh, it's just something that you know if we could get you know, blessing from from Jody or, or something at somebody at Public Works to to take a look at it and, and go through it. It'd be good. We address the we address the paving of the utility easement. We'd be fine with if you made that a condition of approval, but it's 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 not a it's not an issue that we'd even be able to entertain with uh, the way the coverage of the lot is. We don't want any more coverage than we're showing on this plan, so we'd be more than happy to have a condition on that. Um, as far as the the headlight glare. It's. I think that's that's an issue that'll that'll happen with with any you know any driveway entrance onto the onto a main road uh, that has houses so close to the so close to the road uh, in general. Um, One question I have yeah. for you about that, Neil, is when we're at the site walk, I did notice. Is there any play of sliding the road over a little bit? Like if it was moved over like ten feet, it would be more of what Chris is. It'd be facing his garage instead of his main part of the house and, and the only, I don't know if you have that much leeway but the the well there were a couple a couple issues with that is uh, one um, they were looking when I was speaking with Jay Wheeler uh, sewer district uh, we were trying to keep that keep that sewer manhole uh, either in the either in the sidewalk or off of the roadway uh, as opposed to getting that right in the middle of the roadway if they had to do any work in it uh, but that's that's something we could revisit and and see if it see if it makes sense to, to push that over and that would also it would realign the road a bit 
uh, just trying to make sure we come in at a 90 degree on the on the entrance. But right. I can I can take a look at that and, okay. and see if that see if we can do something with that. Okay. And again, there was uh, just uh, the question of why couldn't we come in over cemetery? It's that same uh, that same line of, of reasoning that we don't want to do all that uh, damage to to the natural you know environment coming through, and it'd be a long long drive and a lot of impact to get back to this location, and then we'd also still be needing to bring the utilities up from uh, from from Pine Hill and bring it into that center section, and the center section is also uh, it's it's wetter out there. Uh, there's a little more to contend with as far as uh, as far as groundwater and and uh, uh, and as they they were discussing the the kind of it's it's not it wasn't classified as a stream when uh, the soil scientists went out there. I think that's due to the fact that it's just a mass of water during events and during thaws. Um, but that's it's something we didn't want to. We didn't want to contend with, and we wanted to try and keep it in the in the in the already developed area. So, uh, and as far as doing any of the, the subsidized housing or anything like that, it's it's not the intent for this uh, for this project. Is they're intended to be uh, sold as just market value uh, condo units uh, with with the, the condominium association. From the start or rent it? No, no, uh, we're, not, we're not going back and forth right now. Yeah, but uh, these, or, as, I know, it's okay. I know, and you can be curious, that's fine. Um, this is just his time to yeah. answer those questions. Um, I know you're going to have more questions, and as, the public hearing is still, it's, we're going to have it again. So, please, thank you. And um, as far as uh, the impact statement, we, we did have uh, input from, uh, from water sewer. Uh, they've gone out to the site with us and, and given us given us information that, that we needed and we've updated the plans with. Um, and as far as the uh, the school impact, I've actually had I've had many conversations with Audra. I'm the superintendent at SAD 60, uh, trying to discuss how, trying to figure out how she is supposed to present us with uh, you know with you know with capacity and things like that. Uh, and we're actually still working with her. She hasn't really, haven't really been able to, to <coughs> pull something together that, that uh, that's effective. Um, and that's for all projects, uh, not specifically ours. Uh, so basically, all all she has put out there is said, well, if everything in everything in the town uh, ordinances is met, then it's you know the responsibility of the district to you know to accommodate the students. Uh, so that's it's it's an ongoing. It's an ongoing thing. I think uh, if we wanted to do a quick memo, uh, that kind of it was a kind of a, I guess a shortened impact assessment memo, just to have it in the record and, and uh, be able to be reviewed. I'd, I'd be fine with that, and I think we uh, we could get that on file just so we have we have something in the in the approval that uh, notes that it was it was looked at. Existing house. Okay. I think I think that hit everyone unless you guys had you one. Got some, yeah. Got some uh, the rock wall on the back side. You just wanted oh, to make yes. sure that that's no, not that's, gonna get touched. And that, no, that you could I, and we'd then, be fine with that being a condition of approval as well. It also seemed like yeah. possible more screening behind that. Yep, and that's and that's another thing we'd uh, more than happy to uh, install, you know, as much as much screening or as little screening as as uh, the board and is the board's pleasure and uh, and is requested by uh, by the abutters it's it's certainly something that you know we did this with the intent of kind of trying to trying to keep the the development and the buildings themselves more out of out of the public view uh, at least from Pine Hill Road uh, this we we've kind of went back and forth on this uh, there's this stand of trees that's out here that's as uh, as was kind of noted, uh, there's a lot of kind of bamboo growth and things like of that nature in that area, and it's you know it's it's dense 
in in the growing season, so the vision, you know, the visibility is down. But we also wanted, you know, good looking, uh, good looking landscaping out there. So we indicated some some new trees in that section. But I mean, we can revisit and relocate trees and keep some, uh, you know, keep some of that natural vegetation that's dense out there as is. Uh, I think that's perfectly acceptable if that's the pleasure of the board as well. And as far as uh, coming through on on the back side here, as I as I had said. Uh, we did try to keep everything uh, for our development pitched back and collected back into our system uh, so that it, we're, we're not going to impact uh, anything coming downhill here. In fact, we're trying to uh, trying our best to, to stop flow that was going there and catch it and, you know, outlet it to a more appropriate location. So. Okay, Jerry. There was a question about the rock wall as it's showing down on the other two lots doesn't extend all the way down there. What's is there a plan to do that for that gap or um, so you go back to your as, as far as the easement Oops, sorry. down towards down through here yeah I uh, guess this we just we stopped the easement here uh, just due to the fact that once you get past this line no uh, but the rock wall that's shown here I think the question was it stops right yeah and doesn't go all oh, the way uh, no, I'm not sure why that is cut off there. No, there's there's not going to be any impact to that. Uh, <laughs> no, sorry. no, we got your question. Yeah, yeah. your old question. <laughs> so, your old answer. but no, we're we're not uh, we're not planning to impact. Well, we're not going to impact any of that that property line there. We're staying away from that and keeping uh, keeping the distance from the property line that's required for both the utility lines and any kind of development. Of course. Out and back in this section, we don't plan on doing any work at all from here uh, all the way through here until we get uh, we get to the end here. Once we stub those uh, those off, uh, that's going to be on whoever buys these lots to perform that work out there. Right, so, so there's no plan to extend that wall and meet, have it meet I, up with the other part here, right? There's no plan to do anything with that wall at all. No. Okay. I got a lot. Okay. Yep. Just going down. The list, a couple things that were missed. There was a question on frontage and setbacks that wasn't answered yet. And I guess that all I can say to that one is they, the it, plan says a minimum of 150. Correct. Right here. Right, and that's and that's um, on this back here. So what we ended up doing with that is that's why we had to create this uh, this private right of way. So we're getting our frontage off a private right of way built to the town standards now, as opposed to getting 150 feet on cemetery on Pine Hill Road. This existing lot has still been left with uh, this one's left with more frontage than it needs, but that's just because of the width of the lot. We needed to make sure we kept everything in the setbacks. So the frontage and setbacks is met by what you did here. Correct. Yep. Yep. Our setbacks are look at setbacks. Our setbacks are off right of okay. off of our our. Uh, right away here so we meet all those okay. okay there was a question about an existing culvert and the issues with that I think that's the one that was, uh, was discussing back at the uh, he was discussing uh, back at this portion of it where this uh, this wetland here uh, uh, you know, abuts the uh, the neighboring property, and the culvert that comes through here, we can you can identify water uh, running through this portion of the lot, but we didn't pick up an invert, so it didn't pick up a bottom of a pipe anywhere out there. Uh, but anything that's out here, uh, we'd be able to avoid uh, because the lo utility lines that are going through are going to be either a pressure uh, sewer line, inch and a quarter pressure sewer line, uh, that will be feeding into the in the line on Pine Hill, or it's going to be the water line, which is we should be able to to dip that down to get it to, to get it to avoid anything out there. The culvert or anything. Nope. I guess that was the question, right? Nope. The, the intent is to leave everything. Yeah. yeah, it's and it's the intent is to leave everything, uh, everything flowing through the site as it did before, and not uh, not impact anything that's going, you know, up and down through the page here. Okay. There was a question: Is how the land's going to be left? Some of it, right? There are piles of dirt, or what? I guess some, some areas. 
I'm don't not. Know. I'm not quite sure. It's, it's this is just going to be this could be an, you know an active construction site while it's being built. Any spoils piles will have to you know abide by you know the erosion control plan that's that's uh, approved and and uh, was submitted with uh, in the plans here. Uh, and it's it's we're not going to have any spoil piles uh, that are going to be remaining after con the completion of construction. Uh, we're not going to be impacting these wetlands. So everything from here on. Uh, won't be touched. Uh, so this the portion here is really going to be, um, you know, all contained on this portion of the developed site, and it it would be almost impossible to try and get a try and have a spoils pile anywhere on there when you're done and not have it be, you know, an eyesore to these, and probably wouldn't be able to sell them. So it's it's going to be going to do as much you know landscaping and beautification of the of the you know the surrounding area as possible. So. Okay. The other question, I don't think you can answer because the condo bylaws aren't done, but there was a question about pets. Correct. Yeah, and that's, I'm, we're not sure on that one. Yep. yep. And then I think the last two here, starting timeline and when to finish. And that's that's going to be kind of based on on, uh, on demand and, and, and the approval process as well. Uh, I'm sure it'll, you would probably like to start after, after the thaw, you know, in April. Uh, if all the uh, if all the uh, you know approvals were obtained, and as far as the uh, the timeline to fully complete it, I am not sure on that. I'd have to come back and I'll put something together uh, for the next meeting, and I'll uh, talk with the applicant and see what kind of research he's planning on putting into it, you know, and what time. That's all I have. I think they address everything. Harris, do you have something? I, yeah, I. I'm sorry. Feel awkward interjecting, but I did write down one other that hasn't been covered. Um, Craig and Lynn asked if there were any requirements for the two lots out back. Those are just going to be two basic yep, house slots, just the yep. basic code, or is there anything in regards to this project? No, nope. no, those are just uh, those were just two. This is basically the size that that we wanted this, and um, the applicant said, "Well, if we run lines out to the end, would we be able to?" you know get lots out there for for uh, people to utilize I said we could but we like I said we'd have to get the municipal sewer and water out there that's the only way you could you could get those and so uh, he said he thought it would be he thought it would be you know a worthy investment for for that to try and get those lots but they are you'd just be selling the land and then they'd have someone you know, a builder probably not affiliated with with our applicant in any way uh, would develop those lots we had talked briefly with um, with Star at the water department about uh, trying to continue trying to continue the water main and loop it back around, but it was it was a little too onerous to try and try and take on at this point. So uh, it would just be it would just be stopped there, and it would be uh, a private line. I guess I could go into that too. Uh, the utility this this would be an extension of of the of the larger water main uh, coming up to here, and from here on in, this would just be services uh, and. So the easement is really just to allow uh, these two lots to to pull water from uh, from that extended main out here. So. Thank you. Okay. I didn't. Does anyone else have any questions, comments? Lee J, do you have anything to add? Uh, no, I don't. Um, I just make sure, uh, Neil, that you can provide me whatever you have electronically whenever it's done and, and uh, any changes are made so that I can keep track of everything going on with the project for the next <laughs> next round. Okay, sounds good. Um, is, is that Dropbox working for you or is that... You'd rather e me email it? Uh, just email it. That okay. would be great. Thank right. you. Neil, can you send it to me as well? We'll do it. Yeah. Okay. And then actions tonight. Is there any actions being taken tonight? Um, the if It might take me a few minutes if you have other business, but the board could could approve the preliminary application, but... I think there's a list of conditions that even though Neil, although Neil did put it on the record, a lot of this information, 
Um, so, you know, the board could approve the preliminary application. And if there's anything missing or has not been addressed for final, uh, I would certainly uh, work to make sure that those conditions are addressed at that time. So you could take action tonight if you wanted to. Um, it would be closing the public hearing and taking action, or you could keep the public hearing open um, or have a second public hearing uh, during final review. Uh, however you want to work it, you're going to be able to work it at this point because we're not approving a final project. Okay. Um, my, yep. My recommendation would be to find the application complete, have Neil come back, the next meeting. You mean approve the pre preliminary? Yes. Okay. And then come back. So then I would have to I would have to close the public hearing and then have you another. You wouldn't one. have to. <laughs> well, that's what Lee J just said. Yeah. You can either leave the public hearing open, or um, you could close it and just suggest that you're going to have a, another public hearing during the final review. Okay. There's, there's nothing that says you can't do that. Okay. So, I mean, I think we should leave it open, and then that way, right before we um, go to the final, if there's any more concerns or questions, we can answer them then. Um, what do you guys think? That's probably a good idea. Okay. Yeah. And Matt, do you have any questions or comments? No? Not really, no. Okay. Um, I'll make a motion that we um, approve the preliminary and um, yeah, with with keeping the final or keeping with the, the conditions that we accepted with the um, the shortened impact assessment, the um, traffic study, the easement, uh, the no road on easement, and the traffic. Um, was it the impact study? That, as far as that one goes, not we, the impact we, study, but the one you said with Jody about the whole Pine Hill. Yeah, if we talked with so about site, that site distance, site distance, site distance. Yeah, yeah. site distance. Yeah, we do have that one on on sheet R one, but I'll put that on on the site plan so that's on on the and, plans of record there. Okay. And and Neil, have you done trip gen yet? Yep. Yep. We have an initial traffic assessment with the with the trip gen numbers in there. Yep. Okay. Okay. Could you just make that motion again? And okay. Just state it. Yeah. Okay. I will uh, make that motion again to accept the preliminary um, with the conditions um, stated. I'll second. Okay. Further discussion? Roll call. Matt? Aye. Jerry? Aye. Aye. Myself and me, yes. Don and CJ? Aye. All right. Thank you, Neil. Thanks, guys. Thank you. See you on the 19th? Yes. Yeah. Should be all set. The second ago, you're keeping the public hearing open. It is public open. Public hearing is open. So I thought that meant that I could ask one question like clarification. It so is I'm not open right now to speak. That will be next meeting. After, so the next meeting, you next can. Meeting. Once it's in old business, <laughs> we that it's ended at that point, and we've moved on. Well, we tried to raise our hand and ask before you even voted. Well, we were already in old business. Once we get into old business, you you can't ask any more questions until so we. So the next meeting, we, we you can speak your conditions then. Is that correct, Lee J? Yes. Um, so basically, you're leaving it open so you're not advertising a public hearing again. It's in the hands of the, the, the abutters to be aware that the 19th is the next meeting and um, that you will allow comment um, from them during that pro part of the process. Yep. And I'm assuming that uh, Neil's revised plans and submission uh, 
the, the folks from the abutters should check daily to see if that information has been submitted. And yes, it's on the website. Certainly paper copies could be available um, to look at in the in town hall as well, I would assume, right, David? Yes, correct. So just keep checking and find out you know, when Neil gets his revised information in for the next meeting. Right. We'll get that in by Thursday will be the, will be the deadline for that. Correct. Yeah. 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 So. yeah Cause we need the information at least a week right. before we yeah. post it. Okay. All right. Moving on findings of fact, major subdivision 57 old route Four, Altus engineering tax map R 62 lot seven. Oh, we lose Lee J. I didn't see any issues with the findings of fact, so I'll nope. make a motion that we approve the findings of fact for o 57 Old Route 4. I'll second that. Okay, further discussion? Roll call vote. Matt? Aye. Jerry? Aye. I'm a yes. Aye. Don and CJ? Aye. All right. Findings of facts are accepted. And then next old business is revision of land use ordinance and subdivision regulations. All right. Dave, you want to go through this? Okay, so you guys remember Christy. She yep. came out here about six months ago. Um, and she is going to be helping us with the MS4 revision, which every town in a municipality actually in Berwick needs to change. She's done a great job. She wrote a pretty much okay. Um, she wrote pretty much the whole. She took our, our copy of our our, of our uh, laws and she rewrote them to be exactly what we need to have in our bylaws. So um, you have she she wasn't able to make this meeting. She's going to be able, she's working in another municipality tonight, but she's going to be at this, the 19th meeting if you have any other questions. I know we don't have a full board tonight as well. So what we need to do is get this approved by, we have three meetings because we need to get this to the selectmen by March, the first meeting of March. The selectmen will have a public hearing on it, which we'll have another, we'll have a public hearing on this, by the way, on the 19th. But the selectmen will have a public hearing on it, and then they'll approve it, and if they approve it, and then it will go to a town-wide vote. So every every voter will be voting on this, and this will go into effect July 1st of 2023. So um, what you see is the stuff that's crossed out is the stuff that's coming out of the regulations, and the stuff that is added is highlighted in uh, sharper fonts so that is what you have there it's basically the notes from the discussion we had with her two meetings ago correct? that's that's right. exactly it okay. yes so there's no need to act on this tonight 
I know it's 19 pages or 17 pages because I printed them out. Um, but you could take a look at them, uh, or you know, you could wait till the 19th and ask for any questions that you might come up with over the next two weeks. You don't need to act on this tonight, but uh, you should think about uh, the 19th or the first meeting in February acting upon this. So we we'll would just look for approval of this change, then it would go to the selectmen, and then it would go to the voters in June. Okay. Do you, if you have any questions, you can ask me. You can ask Lee J. They lost Lee J. We lost Lee J. Yeah, I think we lost him a little while ago. It's okay. It's okay. That's that's fine. Yeah, he, we're, he's he's already past his point. Uh, <laughs> uh, okay, so. We'll just talk about that next meeting. Um, the next is appointment of positions. January 1st, well, it's the first meeting in January, so now we have to vote on chair, vice, and secretary. So if anyone has any recommendations for chair. I recommend we keep Michael as uh, Mike LaRue as our chair and uh, Bill Roy as the vice chair. One at a time, one at a time. Uh -huh. I'll second Mike LaRue as chair. Okay, further discussion? All in favor, roll call. Matt? Aye. Jerry? Aye. Don? Aye. And CJ? Yep. All right. Next is the vice. I say Phil Roy continues to be. You uh, make a motion? Chair. You mean you make a motion? I mean, I make a motion to have Phil Roy as uh, continuing to be uh, vice chair. Okay. I'll second. Okay, further discussion. All right. Roll call, Matt? Aye. Jerry? Aye. I'm a yes. Don? And Aye. CJ? Both are yeses. All right. And then the secretary. Is, is that technically my role? That is your current role, yes. Um, that's basically your basic, what the role of the secretary is, that is the third person in line. If the chair or the vice can't make it to the meeting, you would be the one that would hold the meeting, if we still had a quorum. Um, I mean, I'll make a motion that uh, Matt stays as secretary. I'll second that motion. Okay, further discussion? All right, roll call, Matt? Aye. Jerry? Aye. I'm a yes, Don? Aye. Yes, Aye. and CJ is a yes, all right. All right, no new business. Uh, second public comment. Anything, this is for anything not related to what we've already discussed. Um, It can't be about anything. I didn't say it was. Okay, I'm just letting you know. I'm going to ask you a question. What are we doing in this town to try to realize caps? And I heard this gentleman talk to the superintendent of the school district, but what are, what are the considerations that you guys have for the volume of people we're adding? Not just us, Lebanon on fire right now because you can still afford a house there and uh, and North Berwick's building quite large too we have several developments you guys know mm -hmm. uh, I'm just curious on what you guys as far as I know we don't have any caps is, is that correct Dave I mean, that's correct uh, back when I first moved to the town 22 years ago we had just done away with um, the requirement you were mentioning earlier about 15 or 12 permits. I forget what it was. Yeah. 12 permits yeah. per year, building permits per year. And there was a line literally out the door on New Year's Eve. Um, but that was to manage the growth in the town. At the time, we really didn't have the, the infrastructure. Um, but now I think a lot's changed. I think something needs to be done uh, with the amount of uh, people that we have moving to the town. I agree, 8,500 people is our population and I see construction crew after constru home 
and developments going in, and I'm like, and now I work for the town, and I'm like, oh, that's that's a lot. So I think that we need to take a step back, but. And that would be something that the comprehensive plan would probably be looking into? That's, that's correct. So okay. that's what we're doing with the comprehensive plan as well. Right. I can speak to that. Okay. Myself and my wife are working on the comp plan, as Dave knows, and that is being addressed. James has done a survey, the town manager. So they're looking into right. that specific thing. Great. And that may, that would, once you guys come to a conclusion, that would have to go to a vote, or is that something that our selectmen can take care of themselves? I don't know what happened. Something that the selectmen would have to take care of, right. but it would probably go to a vote. But you, you can know one thing that, you know, James is from this town, I'm from this town, so we have a vested interest in this town. We don't want to make this the next Manhattan. <laughs> we really don't. But I, I, think I don't that think that's see, why 8,500 people came here to have Manhattan. I think you're going to see as as the as the economy changes and the interest rates have risen for home ownership, you're going to see you're going to see that the amount of buildings, the amount of, of development is going to slow down. The development was so high for a long time because my mortgage rates three percent. So, but now, I mean, I think they're averaging like eight percent, seven and a half, eight percent. So, I yeah. think that's 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 a big consideration as well. Mm -hmm. And and with that consideration, and this is not applying to what we just talked about, but in general, mm -hmm. condos, condo fees, people in over their head, barely can pay the bank. Who are you going to pay first, the bank or the condo fee? All right, these bylaws and how we handle them and what they didn't produce tonight, but sure. they produce at your final meeting, I'm yes. sure, yep. then these things really, I, I'm sorry, I know you guys know it, I just have to say it, I'll feel better, okay? <laughs> <laughs> you know, but those things, I've watched, I grew up not here, where condos and townhouses were building huge developments, pools, everything, everybody was God's sake, they all look like dirt now, because the condo fees were the problem. That's why when Dave told me they weren't being sold, I was like... Sweetie, for a while, my wife. I said that to not Dave. <laughs> I, said, I said, you know, I, I, you know, at least we have that. We can go to one person right now and talk to them. Yeah. But we won't have that soon. You'll only have the head of the condo fee if some poor guy wants to get in line, mm -hmm. which probably is one of you guys because you like are gluttons for punishment. <laughs> so I mean, you know. Well, so I mean, between HOAs and condo associations, they're very similar on how they're handled and. Both of them, the town doesn't really have much to do with it until it becomes an issue for code enforcement when, let's say, the the drains aren't draining and stuff like that aren't happening. Right, but may, condo, I'm sorry. Condo Association, Homeowners Association, I don't deal with any of their, like, they've got pets or they've, <coughs> they're not supposed to have, as, a, as an example, former jurisdiction that I worked in, former municipality. The homeowners association said no ADUs, no accessory dwelling units. Our zoning ordinance said that particular area, yes, they could. When I enforce, I have to enforce to the code, not to the their HOA particular standard. documents, whether it be HOA that would or more likely be a civil. But if issue. they do something that is against code, you guys will always have me to call to step in and do things. Great. And then if they do something that's against their condo docs or HOA documents, then it does become a civil matter and there's court processes. So when people come in to get a final approval and they have their condo bylaws or whatever you call them mm -hmm. down, are, once they submit them to you, that's your last chance to have any say at it, right? To have any input at all, it's your last chance because you don't. You, we don't really you get that. We don't permit. really have any input on it. They basically give us that, and it's documented in the uh, paperwork. But we don't <coughs> tell them they can't have pets. That's something that I'm just well, giving I'm more an example. worried about the maintenance of the building. Well, even the that's maintenance, the we don't. We it. don't you say. Know, that's what I'm worried yeah. about. Is all these people paying in, and somebody doesn't pay in, and then the next guy finds out. And it just becomes a bigger issue. Get him with the mic over. I'm sorry. That's up to the homeowners association, to which, I, which I live in a homeowners association right downtown here in Berwick. And um, 
we the, the homeowners association we can, I've looked at the bylaws they get they get two times that you can get an email or a, a letter or you can get one of the, the guys coming down there saying hey you need to pay your homeowners fees if you don't two times they can take a lien out on your house that's that's what can happen and that's that's what will happen with that's what could happen with the condo fee if their bylaws are are structured that way I grew up living in a condo for a while um, but that it wasn't it wasn't structured that way yeah Okay, thank you. I was just curious on yeah. that, you know, yep. just in general. Yep. Yeah, it, it's the owners is, is left up to the owners to, to elect the board. They have mm -hmm. to have annual meetings. Right. So I think our only is. input is that they and have something. Add. Right. Our only input is that they have it. Yeah. Like they we, have. We require them to have something, right. some type of structure. Right. right. Yeah, an agreement of some kind, right. and it has to be written, and that's yep. more or less all you have for. That's all. Yep. Okay. Code I was issues. just curious because it yep. said that when we were looking into the other thing, they said something about bylaws and stuff. I didn't know how far you could go with that, so I was just curious. Yep. Thank you very much. Yep. Thank you. Okay. I'll close the second public comment. Uh, informational items. I don't have any. Oh, oh, Lee J is already gone. I know. We um, didn't talk about this. Not that, but um, I kind of wanted oh. to touch base on procedures for um, joint meetings with other towns. Uh, but we can deal with that after um, the next meeting. Um, other than that, I don't. I, I don't really have anything besides the um, thanks for coming out to the joint meeting with South Berwick last night. I still haven't talked to uh, Jennifer, who is the code enforcement officer for Southboro because she's also the acting town planner right now I haven't talked to her today but it looks like the, the 500 feet that is in Berwick with no homes on it uh, that is isn't paved that road we're gonna have to do something together with South Berwick now you can you can either go to their meetings as as a group as a, as a you know as a board and sit through their meetings and you could vote on it you do one vote or you can have me go to the meetings and uh, you know and I'll, I'll ask Irish to come and um, except for the three key ones those except for the three key ones that you guys yeah. have to be there the three the three major ones the, the finding of facts the final and the other one the three major ones you guys would need to be there because you would need a quorum we would need to should should be there to be able to make sure that our our municipalities are protected and getting what we need for that our portion the rest you know James has already double checked and it's fine if you send the peon committee instead of the big wigs going out so I'm, I'm, I'm fine either way okay or if you'd like you can attend all of the meetings right but it will be because I'll be there regardless yeah. it'll be a joint <laughs> venture <laughs> yeah okay and then there's still the uh, question he was going to have you check with Lee J in regards to uh, the site plan amendment for industry drive right because something will have to be done there so you'll be seeing something but not for that project per se but because that project impacts indirect them. through that project yeah. yes yeah. because that's impacting the other site plan so that will be what yeah. this board will have to yeah. view yeah. fully okay on its own yeah. um Jerry? will there have to be a public hearing for those people on industry drive to know not, what's going on not for uh, us not on our side well yes and no we are going to provide still um james said that there would be a butters notices sent out to the industry drive people but it but would be with go their to South zoom Berwick, right. yeah, okay. it, yeah so they are not their, holding a meeting for well, them as long as they yeah. get they'll a, have their opportunity they need to, the information because yeah. of what's happening yeah. that, that's all i'm concerned yeah. about yeah, yeah they'll okay. have the opera well and my concern when when uh, we went up dave and i went up and spoke with james first thing my concern was that the constituents have the opportunity to present any concerns that they have as well right. mm -hmm. particularly where we're talking a residential industrial right. mix um, and James assured us that 
we'd be able to give the, the Zoom link and the information for any of our constituents here, our residents, to attend the South Broward meeting as well. And then the and only, we'll be doing those notifications. The only other question I had from last night was, there, we already know, as you say, said, Dave, there's a DOT study going on down a little ways. On Route 4. On yeah. Route 4. Should that be extended because of this and what's going to be happening up that way? That's it's only it's, like a half a mile from it's, there. It's being, it's being done from the South Berwick to the North Berwick line, that 2.9 okay. miles of Route 4. Okay. I wasn't they're, sure. They're out there. They're, out, they're currently out there right oh, now. Oh, I see them. Mm -hmm. yeah. I live there. <laughs> yeah. We've had, we've had a couple meetings with them up at, uh, um, what's his name's place? But, okay. Um, I'm set. Mark, Mark Pendergast's place. He's yep. a selectman. And we've had a couple meetings up there with them. But they're, they're all over it. Yep. I, I see them sitting at the end of my road. Mm -hmm. they've, got, they've gone over. Well, maybe you can put an island here. Maybe you can put a barrier here and you can put they got to do something with the put 55 a, put a, mile an hour put a light there stop yeah because it's not 55 miles an hour cars aren't doing 55 they're doing no. 75 miles an hour my road's 25 and they're doing 55 right yeah my, my life works at the golf course and yeah. yeah i was i was out there tonight um after we had our mm -hmm. walk through over in that property and i'll tell you what that's at night it's even worse mm -hmm. yep. twilight yep. it's the worst well, when the sun comes up and the sun's uh, setting that's yeah it's dangerous it is but dangerous yeah, it the is. other thing is, well the other thing is those cement trucks leave at five o'clock in the morning because mm -hmm. i hear them mm -hmm. yeah yeah so yeah just like you were saying last night about the noise for the people mm -hmm. those houses aren't but a thousand feet or less away mm -hmm. They're making noise at five yeah, o'clock in the morning. Sadly, it's going to come down to buyer beware for that portion. Well, well to a point. I mean, we can point. protect them as much as we can, and yeah. after right. that, it's after that, it will yep. come down because you're not going to block all that sound. No, well, no, no, you're not. On no. my interview coming off the planning board, my interview for this job, James asked me. He's like, "What are some of your concerns about the t town?" I'm like, "The 2.9 miles of Route Four through in Berwick yep. are a nightmare. The traffic. Oh my God." He's like, "Okay, I get it. I get it. You're big into this. You're going to be on that committee." So, <laughs> yeah. Good. Well, yeah. how many deaths have been there in two years? Right. I saw one of them. Right. So, good. and yeah, we have one of the selectmen. His daughter died there. Mm -hmm. Five or six years ago. Yep. Okay. Yep. Okay. Okay. Seeing no further more information, I move that we adjourn this meeting. I'll second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Aye. Thank you.